Welcome back. We've heard initial arguments from Timi Lolua and Jennifer, both of them very clearly stating their points. They will now each get two minutes to either rebut their opponent's point or solidify their stance. Timi Lolua, your two minutes start now. Interestingly, I listened and paid close attention to Jennifer's arguments. She did mention several countries where it is not working. But in actual fact, it's not about whipping up sentiments. Truth be told, that you do not have water in your house does not mean that you should not have your bath for seven consecutive days. Ladies and gentlemen, it might interest you to know that many independent scientists and organizations all around the world have looked at thousands of scientific studies and they have all come to one conclusion. That is, genetically modified foods do not pose any more risks to plants, to animals, and to the environment than other foods. Interestingly, some of these organizations around the world are top guns. Examples include the World Health Organization, the United States National Academy for Science, the, World, the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, the American Medical Association, and of course, the American Association of, for the Advancement of Science. Ladies and gentlemen, the facts speak for themselves. The facts do not lie. They stare us right there in the face. If we want to cater for the population explosion that is sure to happen in this country, definitely we need to make provision. And that single way is to embrace technology. All over the world we have technological advancements. GMOs represent advancement in technology and we must embrace GMOs because that is the way forward. Let's embrace GMOs in Nigeria. That is the only way we can stave off hunger, poverty and starvation. That is where I stand. Thank you. Jennifer. It's funny because WHO says that glyphosate, the same, the same carcinogen found in Monsanto's um, maize and herbicides, it has cancer, it has carcinogens that can cause cancer. I have an uncle who is um, a kidney patient, he's suffering from kidney issues, and we don't know how it started. They, they keep asking, what did you eat? What have you been eating? And the truth is that we actually have GMO products in Nigeria. They are illegal. Obviously, when you Google GMOs, the first thing you see is apart from the definition they talk about rigs they talk about people who who, who have banned them they talk about all these things for us to know that there's a good and there's a bad truth we have food insecurity we have food issues and i keep going back to thinking inside the box thinking with our farmers thinking with the different ngos that are poised to talk about these things. We have research institutes in Amadubelo, we have Ibado. Nobody goes to them. They are not even in these GMO meetings. As far back as 2014, when the talks about GMOs came up, the interesting thing is nobody knew, public didn't know. We know we have these people up there in government doing their thing by the back, and nobody really knows. People just want to eat. Of course we are hungry, but we want to know what's in our plate. Don't you want to know what's in your plate? I did a Twitter poll this morning. I asked, do you want GMOs? People are asking me, what are GMOs? We just want to eat. We don't want people to die. We have a health sector that is already failing. We have wrong data. We have so many things going on. We don't want people to die from what they are eating. Interestingly, Monsanto claims that um, that GMOs have been around since Adam and Eve. I read, I went back to the Bible, Genesis 2, chapter 9, chapter 19. God created these plants from the earth. He didn't put anything. I don't want GMOs. You don't want GMOs. You probably don't know what GMOs are, but I'm telling you, and this is the fact, it's not about sentiments. We don't want these things that we can't understand, basically. There we have it, guys. Initial arguments, rebuttals. Our debaters will now have one last minute, and this is for them to make a final statement, maybe make a speech to the public, maybe talk to the government. It's entirely up to them. Tim Lulua, you have one minute, starting now. It's not about not wanting stuff that you do not understand. It's about what is right, what is logical, and what is commonsensical. Interestingly, the American Association for the Advancement of Science said as far back as the year 2012, quote, the science is quite clear. Food improvement 
more like crop improvement due to modern molecular techniques in biotechnology is safe. This was as a result of research extensively conducted. And of course, that statement was released in the year 2012. She mentioned God being the creator of everything and creating everything from the earth. Listen attentively. Who invented technology? Who gave man the idea to think outside the box and to create science and technological advancements to make life better? You're wearing clothes. You probably came in a car. Why not shun all of that and say you want things that come from the earth? This is why I stand. GMOs are good for us. Let's embrace them with open arms. Thank you. Okay. So Temin Oluwa took an extra 15 seconds. So I will give you that extra 15 seconds so that you know it's an equal playing ground. And your time starts now. OK, great. So there's a hunger problem. People need to eat. And they're saying that we're malnourished in Africa. They're saying they won't bring in their technology. But if it's, why is there an argument if it's safe? Why is there a problem? Why can't they just bring it? Why are we going behind the backs? Why are they hiding the secrets of their technology? Why, don't, why is there not a transparent value chain or supply chain? The truth is that. As Africans, we know what we want, but we're shy, we're scared. We don't want to think outside the box. We don't want to think inside the box. We don't think of our problems from the inside out. The truth is what we need in Africa is food sovereignty and climate smart agriculture. If we can think about the different ways we can work with our arable soil, God has blessed us with so much natural resources that we can just think inside, work with farmers, encourage young people to farm. And the problem with agriculture is that we spend three billion, three to five billion dollars every year importing food. When we have aging farmers, we have farmers who have issues with irrigation, they have issues with crop protection. There are so many problems that we want the Ministry of Agriculture to look inside. Let them not look for the easy way out and get GMOs. Let's work with the people we have and basically do what is right. Thank you. Hmm. There we have it, guys. Two very impassioned, well, impassioned and logical arguments for and against GMOs. Where do you stand? What do you think? Who made the more convincing argument? Our poll is going up immediately after the show, and you need to vote and let us know who you thought won this debate. Thank you so much, Jennifer. You. you did very well. Thank you so much, Timmy Lolua. Thank you very much. Again, you just... This is so familiar. I did this debate with him. This is exactly what he did. And so, these are the facts. This is it. Very, very familiar. <laughs> but thank you so much for coming back. Thank you very much for having me. Guys, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back.